Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Bash Mania podcast. This is episode 71, and I'm your host, Justin Bash. Today, Jordan Oliver comes back on the show to talk about his upcoming match this weekend with Jason Nolf. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast, be sure to subscribe wherever you listen. Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, Overcast, wherever you listen to podcasts, be sure to subscribe to Bash Mania. And if you enjoy this episode, be sure to leave a five-star rating and review on Apple podcast it's bashomania let me tell you something brother he gave us everything he had in him tonight what you gonna do what bashomania runs wild on you. oh it's gonna be a good one and business just picked up here on the podcast Oh, yeah. All right. We got the cowboy, Jordan Oliver. How are you, man? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. We had to do this episode. It's overdue. I've been telling you, like, you have so many good stories and such insight. I want to keep bringing you back on. And you're wrestling in the main event this Sunday, June 28th, against Jason Nolf. And what better topic to talk about? And I'm so curious. Like, let's start this off. How did this match come about? Because I've seen a lot of people trying to get matches together. I see Flo trying to get matches. I see right. Ashnall trying to snub you on Twitter. Like, yeah. I see all these things. So how did this match come about? Um, I, this, this match has a long backstory, right? Because the year I've wrestled as Garoff and beat the streets, I believe it was 2018. Yep. Uh, or 2019, one of them. We were actually setting up to wrestle me and Nolf. Really? And at the time, Nolf was graduating, right? So um, they brought it to our attention, and me and Nolf both obviously liked it. We were like, great, great competitor. Yeah. Let's get on the mat and scrap it out. Um, but he had graduation, so it ended up falling through. So okay. then uh, that's when I got put in the match with Asgaroff. So now we fast forward a couple years down the road, and uh, – Actually, earlier this year, Nolf came and, and visited, you know, and, and me and Nolf got to sit and, and speak and, and uh, get to know each other, and, and the match got brought up. We were like, hey, we were supposed to wrestle. How cool would that have been? And we're just sitting there talking about it. So fast forward to all of this stuff happening, and, and wrestling's put on the back burner, has to, be, has to wait, and now we're bringing wrestling back. Uh, you know, Nolf actually reached out to me before the match was even set up, right? And this is why I love Jason. It's, it's a gentleman's agreement, right? Yeah. Uh, he reached out to me and wanted to, to get a match set up, and it wasn't even going to be for this event, right? It was, I think it was for Flo, right? So we yeah. started talking, and we were trying to get a weight together because I know Jason don't like cutting weight, and let's be honest, I don't like cutting weight. So we're like, <laughs> who does? That makes it work, right? So... It ended up falling through because at the time, me and Ashnaught were speaking about competing, right? Uh, and that was at a lower weight class, like 70 kilos. Uh, but then... <laughs> Wait, time out. I love that it's a lower weight class, 70 kilos, and you're a 65 kilo guy. <laughs> right, right. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm crystal clear with it. I was the one who tweeted, you know. 187 never felt so good, right? So <laughs> right. since the time quarantine started, I went into eating creatine, protein, and just lifting, <laughs> right? Uh, so we started talking in Ashnaught, um to try to get 70 kilos situated. Uh, so we were trying to get that situated for the flow event. I actually was going to do that. Yep. Did, but we just, for my sake and my, uh, you know, just longevity, uh, yeah. I think we save all the strenuous work for when it's time. Yep. Right. Um, it would have been great to wrestle Ashnall, a great competitor. He's one of the top dogs at our weight class. So yeah, uh, it would have been good. And, and it's a Pennsylvania Jersey affair. Who doesn't want to see that? Right. Right. So, uh, so then, then again, this uh, fight and Mike Poeta reach out to me and Jason Knopf's name's brought up again. And I'm like, listen, I'm, I'm going to be, at the time, I'm like, I'm going to be cutting weight to try to make, well, not try. I'm going to make 70 kilos for Ashnaught, but I got to manage it because I'm like, what weight does Nolf want to wrestle at? He's like, what do you weigh? I'm like, I'm 170 right now. 
you know, 174. He's like, well, lost 177. So right there, uh, we just all decided. We were like, you know what? Let's scrap it. No way in. Let's feel good. Let's put on a show for the fans. And, you know, let's get the best version of Jordan Oliver and Jason off on the mat and get the tango. And so it's interesting because as an ignorant wrestling fan, which I think I am, ha never having – wrestled and been good like i wrestled and i understand the importance of weight but i was never any good so for me on the surface i'm like oh if i'm picking a winner it's Nolf all day because in my mind i'm like Nolf's a 74 79 kilo guy right. jay was a 65 kilo guy so you naturally like Nolf's a stud he's the heavier guy exactly. i go i go with him as the as the mindset of it's too much weight obviously you're confident you can take him out what is the perspective to say your Nolf is, you know, he hovers around the weight he wrestles at. You're 40 pounds over what you're going to wrestle the trials for. What's right. your perspective going into it where you're like, I'm a heavy guy right now, or is Nolf right. staying lean? Right. Uh, it's different, right? I got to, I got to, I got to do things a little bit different in my wrestling, right? Because at 65, I'm like this little jumping bean that's just like, <laughs> <laughs> and now I come in a workout weighing 75. I'm like, this is a little bit different on the feet. You know, the, the quickness and the agility and the mobility is a little bit slower. Uh, but, uh, you know, I like to wrestle the best guys, right? Yep. And if you see my past careers, right? I've been able to wrestle at 70 kilos and be uh, successful. Uh, and, you know, I've trained, if you look throughout the years, I've trained with Alex Derringer at Oklahoma State, right? 79 kilo. And I move and go to Arizona State, which I'm training with Zahid Valencia and those guys, which is another 79 kilo. And then I move somewhere to a place called, I think it's Ithaca. <laughs> and there's a guy named Kyle Dake that just decided to power bomb me for my two years <laughs> I was there. So when I start thinking about this match, I'm like – can't be that bad right because i'm big enough i got a good enough frame and i'm a competitor uh, but for my training i always trained with bigger guys yeah uh and on top of it you know high level guys that are yep. at the weight classes above me and you know it's different it's different from the wrestling room to competing uh but it's just like anything else you, you got to prepare uh, and, and I know advantages and disadvantages that are going to happen in the match. And if he's bigger, uh, that's fine. You know, when growing up as a kid, I was always that little, they called me little Jordan, right? I was right. the guy that was 88 pounds eating McDonald's, stepping on the scale <laughs> to wrestle 103. Right? They're like, you got to eat weight to be able to compete. Right. right. So, uh, I think I've always wrestled bigger guys my whole life. So, this isn't nothing new, uh, but Nolf is a, a, a little bit different style with his attacks and his pace. So that can be, uh, that can be uh, a, a different approach I got to take, but it's wrestling, right? He goes out there and, and he puts it all on the line and I go out there and look the score line. One of the things that, you know, happens with me in some of my matches is guys look to shut down. Yeah. Uh, and not shut down, but slow it down. Yep. Whereas I think Jason, he That's doesn't shut it down. <laughs> right. There's, no shut down. There's like, let me try to see if I can score 50 points on this guy. <laughs> right. right. And that's exciting for me because as a scorer, right, I know that scoring 50 points, you got to allow points. Yep. Right. So uh, as a scorer myself, I'm like, man, let's put up 30, 29 match for these people and just have some fun and test each other's limits. Right. And it's interesting because I feel like you can't lose here to the degree of if you did lose the match first of all you're still getting a match in where not that many people are wrestling right now so right. to get a high level competition match in is your perspective though like if you win is there any thought of hey if i can be one of the best guys at 74 kilos that you'd go up to 74 kilos for the trials uh no, no. I mean, you're, you're I got, walking on a 187, so it's kind I'm of not dancing. I'm not, I'm not throwing myself in that dog fight. <laughs> don't, please don't include me in 74 kilos. 
and, and, and Kyle and Jordan and those guys will text me and, and poke at me and be like, oh, you're training for 74 now, huh? <laughs> and I'm like, listen, I want nothing to do with you or Kyle or any of you, right? You fight it out. I'll cut off my leg and get back down, right? So, um, Are you worried about that? Like dropping about, you're basically 40 pounds over 65 kilos right now. 65 kilos, what, like 143? 143. And you're at 187. Are you at all worried about getting back down to 65? No. So, so the funny thing is, is right. So I tweeted that and I accept the match and we start working out. Now my problem is holding weight on. Like I'm going into <laughs> practice and I'm like, I didn't eat enough. Like I'm losing too much weight. And Kenny and, and Coleman and those guys are looking at me. They're like, you're getting lean. You look good. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I need to be bigger. I need to be. Yeah. Bigger. So, uh, I got a different problem to approach now instead of cutting weight. You know, I got to put on weight. Uh, but I think uh, it's going to be a fun match. Like, there's no lose-lose. Right now, I'm, I'm going out. I'm putting myself to compete at another uh, event against yep. another high-level opponent, which is only going to benefit me. Uh, but this also benefits the fans. This benefits uh, a match people want to see. Yep. And a lot of the times, guys that are – you know, separated by these weight classes won't take the match. So I think this yeah. is good for our sport. It's good for us. But for me, uh, you know, I'm looking at it as how many times am I going to compete this year? Like yeah. it's unknown. Yeah. And, and so to get out there against a high level competitor and, and put it on the line, uh, I think is only a positive for me moving forward on keeping me in that mindset of, of competing, but also, um, yes, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a win-win, but as a, as a competitor, I'm going in to win the match. Uh, and I want to win. Right. And yeah. I, I know, oh, the, I know you, I know how competitive you are. I know right. you want to win this. Right. So it's, it's almost like looking at, it's almost the same example as like looking at the Olympics as like your last shot. Yeah. Right. So maybe this is the only time I'll ever get to wrestle and all. Right. And sure. I, I like to, I like to have, the one on my side and yeah not on his side right where it's yeah. like I, I i gotta win over and off but uh either way i think it's it's good for both of us just because you know uh i have abilities that he has to um he's gonna have to come in contact with a guy's his weight right and yeah. i and he has some abilities that you know push me to do things different and and approach wrestling the way i'm going to approach the match with Knopf. so all in all i think it's it's preparing us for later down the road and it's only going to benefit us yeah and i had saw somewhere that as soon as fight tv announced they were doing this i forgot who i saw say it but someone was saying something about this is going to support the wrestlers too like isn't some of the money going back to you guys right so all the um so there's two there's two big things there's all the wrestlers have an individual link so not only if you use the wrestler's individual link, do they get part of the uh, a percentage of the buy. Uh, yep. So it's going straight to the wrestlers to support them in their cause and obviously chasing their dreams down of the Olympic gold medal. But uh, some of the money is also gone back to the programs that are helping with this event, such as like Beat the Streets and all that. So it's good all around for wrestling. And, uh, you know, it, it kind of – makes you think outside the box for wrestling right this is a platform where it's like pay-per-view um it's, it's and it's, there's a super match it's almost like a format of dude UFC. this is what everybody wants everybody says grow the sport like if i don't see everybody and don't get me wrong we just went through a pandemic we're going through a pandemic if people can't afford it i get it i'm empathetic right. to that but if you want to see the sport grow this is somebody i don't nope that fight tv has ever done anything in wrestling before so if you want to encourage fight tv if you want to encourage jo if you want to encourage Nolf and pletcher and lugo and downey and all these guys right. this is how you do it so it's going to be interesting to see when somebody finally steps up and say hey let's put on a pay-per-view event and it's not flow or track it's not one of the mainstream guys that really benefit from the community and right. no disrespect to what flow or track are doing but for somebody to step up and say hey let's do a pay-per-view event and bring the seven, eight, nine matches they're doing. Like, I really hope everybody considers, if nothing else, like 
it's 20 bucks. If it's worth five or 10 to you, spend the extra money because you're supporting all these guys who are training and competing to put on entertainment. This is like you guys are right now. Everybody on this card is training for the Olympics. And like you said, you're adjusting your weight. You're going up. You're doing different things to put on a show. So I really hope and, and I think and that's one of the reasons I wanted to have you on is to really kind of motivate people to go out and support this event. Like you're not going to see this anywhere else. Don't cry that it's not somewhere for free. Like you guys are training in the I love the fact that they're giving money back to the wrestlers. And I see a lot of you guys like you posting the link constantly like swipe up swipe up and right. so for so for people who don't know that's why you're doing it like it's helping you train and it's helping grow awareness of the sport if you and all go out there and put up 40 points whatever i think you guys are going to do it right. only helps the sport and i'm sure when they came to you and said they wanted to do this that was part of your motivation like to transcend kind of do something that when was the last time we saw a pay-per-view not on flow or track like right and this is this is this is new territory we're moving into, right? And it takes the like the inconvenience of you, right? If if just say you don't have the funds to get up and go travel to an event, uh, bring your family, have to pay for stay and all that, uh, you're paying twenty bucks just to have it brought to you live on your computer or, or your device right at home. Yeah, right. So you, you're not inconvenience to go and travel and see this we're we're putting it on pay-per-view so we can bring it to you but also we're putting it on top of a rooftop when you know usually we only see this with the beat the streets event yeah right so if we have more events like this where uh we can get different locations sure at this time right now it's hard because obviously the pandemic and the covid and everything going on yeah but it's going to widen the spectrum so much more once this is over and the 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 ceiling that it can that it can it can reach right with people showing up to the event but also that people that can't show up to the event now they can also buy it as well so it's a double whammy but um like i said it's following the blueprint of like ufc it's not that hard to see how successful ufc was just when right. conor mcgregor decided to go up and fight eddie alvarez yeah. Right. And then all of a sudden everybody's like, listen, I'll go up a weight and beat you up and drop down a weight and beat you up. And right. And it, it brings more viewers and people just get more emotionally involved. And it, it so, encourages other top level wrestlers to do the same thing. I remember I can't remember who it was. Maybe it was Seth Gross and Bryce Meredith that wrestled where Seth was I'll come up a weight yeah. and it starts encouraging others. Like Hey, I'll do that. And I think that's what's happening here where and now you're seeing it, you know, Flo's doing a card next month with three fights. And I personally hope they add a couple more. Um, I think between that event and this event where you got a lot of guys wrestling, I think it's going to start motivating other guys to say, you know what? All the top guys are wrestling. I want to wrestle. It's like the monkey see monkey do like exactly. And as a competitor, you're like, you see somebody that's in your weight that's competing or is brought on to one of these matches. It gives you that itch to be like, I'm not doing enough. Yeah. What are these guys doing that I'm not doing? And these guys are going to competing and I'm not competing. I need to do more. Yeah. Right. So it's, uh, it's awesome. I think, I think we should, you know, set up, you know, cause set up more matches like this because who knows how long um the pandemic and and, and these restrictions are going to go on for right because even thinking ahead it's it's hard to plan training camps and and, and it's hard to plan going to events or, or going to are you back training full-time by the way in the room like i saw you post some stuff but i also saw you like in the garage like are you back in the unc room yeah we're not allowed in there and I was still so, the, one time, the one time I did post in there, got an email that day. Got to get out. Really? Right? So what Coleman did is we set up the office. We we're we're going to call it the office because everybody else is calling the garage their garage, the garage, right? So we got to call it something different. So we we threw around the name yesterday and just named it the office. We're going to get like some science and stuff. But uh, Coleman set up some mats, brought some air dimes out there, ropes, uh, and you know it's. It might be one mat, yep. uh, but to be honest, 
I think it's, it's beautiful because now so I'm a space wrestler. So if I have space, it's very hard to put hands on me and I can, yep. I can manipulate what I want done in the match. Whereas in this garage, you know, you back up too far, you might be on a chainsaw. You know, you, you, you're stumbling over the kids' toys. So it, it almost brings a sense of, you know, that phone booth dirty boxing, but dirty wrestling when you're in there hand fighting. So yeah. I think it's a, to be honest, it's making me better as a wrestler getting into a small area and, and, and really pushing me to, you know, push past my limits and get my best training in a place where, you know, I wouldn't necessarily train or, you know, I have to make do what what's there. there. There's also something to be said about that because I'm the guy and I'll admit to this, right? We, we've started building out a home gym and I keep buying more equipment, more dumbbells, more this, more that. And I, I try to watch myself. I don't say, okay, I don't have a, a this yet. So I'm not going that hard. Once I get that, I'll go full pot committed. Right. And I'm sure a lot of people wrestling right now or in the wrestling community are doing that on a youth level, on a high school level, maybe on a college level. They're not going all out because they're saying, oh, when I can go back to the room, I'll do it. I don't have this. I don't have that. Wrestling isn't a luxury type sport, but a lot of these top programs and a lot of these top clubs have a lot of donors that are pushing beautiful wrestling rooms and beautiful facilities and beautiful accommodations. And I, and I've seen a lot of people that are kind of like they're, they're going maybe 50% saying I'll go hundred percent once the room opens back up and you don't have that, right? Like you're in a garage. And so for all those people who are not going hundred percent because they don't have their useful accommodations, what is driving you to keep going, even though you have a limited accommodation, dude, you, you're training at UNC, one of the most beautiful campuses in the country. Right. And now you're training in a garage for the Olympics, for a pay-per-view event. You're one of the absolute top guys at the weight and you're training with, bare minimum what you have what would you say to somebody who maybe they're kind of waiting on training until they get their normal accommodations um you know one thing one thing that was told to me you know uh from the wise words of and i'm going to be slow here because i'm connecting my charger uh, that's all right <laughs> and the wise words of john smith hey right? he's like you one thing he told me, you know, when we first, me and John first got to sit down and really talk about the goals and where we wanted to go. What do you want to do? Be a world champion Olympic champ. And the first thing he told me is, um, it's now. It's yeah. now. You, you, you go and win now. I don't care if you think you're young, you, you think you're not strong enough, whatever it might be, the time is now. You're able to win now. And you need to realize that and, and uh, yeah. time is huge, right? And I'll be the first person to say that because I've been done with college since 13 and it's 2020. And we're talking about me making my first team possibly. Yeah. Right. So um, I think you have to use your time wisely. And with that being said, uh, I keep saying, I keep saying this and it's a blessing in disguise, right? Yeah. To be taken out of an out of your wrestling room, the comfortable situation you, where you train every day and you know you have the airdyne, the elliptical, you have the ropes, you have treadmills, you have anything that you need for your training. Then to flip that upside down and be in the most uncomfortable position and not know where your training is coming from, I think it's your responsibility to be like, okay. Yes, everybody's going through this, it's, but we don't want any excuses, right? Yeah. It's an excuse. Every, everybody is going through the same thing. Everybody yeah. has a hard time going to their gym, working out. I think you as an athlete need to know yourself and need to find ways to become better. Me, when this time has, when the quarantine time has come upon us, right? I started going back in the weight room and lifting, as you can tell my weight is showing, right? <laughs> I started lifting because it's one thing that I can't necessarily do every day when I'm making 65 kilos. Yeah. Right. So I, I took advantage of the areas that I can get better in uh, and not necessarily, 
I mean, you don't need a treadmill to go run. You need shoes, shorts, and everybody has an outside, right? Yeah. Get your butt out, go run, and get your work in. I think, uh, I think a lot of it right now in this time is very mental, right? Putting in the work and the consistent work and doing something every day to better yourself. I think that's going to build your mental edge. So when it's time to come back, when it's time for us to get back in our wrestling rooms, we're like 10, 10, 20% better because we got better in the areas that we were slacking in and it gave us time to focus on those as long as, you know, uh, we're taking care of business in, in the ways we can, whether it's nutrition, whether it's getting workouts and you got to switch it up. Maybe you have to swim now, maybe you have to run, but in doing so, these are, improving you in areas that you might not even notice until you step back on the mat for the first time again. And you're like, my condition is better. My legs are, 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 are more conditioned. I'm, I'm feeling better on my shots or, you know, you, you never know what it is, but and it doing shocks the system. Like for me as a guy who went to an, I, before this whole pandemic outbreak started, I went to a nice athletic club. I had every machine possible. Now someone tells me like, Oh, you got a rower at home. Okay, I want you to row for two minutes and then do 30 burpees. Row for two minutes and do 30 squats. Row for two minutes with 30 lunges. That's hard. And that I can make hard. every excuses I want. Every excuse I want, like, well, I don't have this machine and that machine. But right. it, it, it's an excuse. And I see that when I'm saying it. Like, not, not only is it so hard, and it's harder than normal. It's harder to just go run five miles. It's harder to do whatever. But right. not only is it hard, it also shocks the system because you're not used to it. So now you're going to do something that you otherwise wouldn't do. And going back to what you said about it being a blessing in disguise, like it is because not only are you forcing yourself to work harder, if you do the same thing bodily constantly, your body becomes accustomed to it. And when you shock the system, it's like night and day. Exactly. It's a whole new world. Yep. And you, and you know, right away, as soon as like I come back, even coming back and getting back on the mat for the first time, it's like after that one mat workout, you know, I'm looking at Kenny and Coleman and man, maybe I do. Feel hurt. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so different ways are, are going to help you train, but in being uncomfortable in training and doing things that you don't necessarily do, I believe you build a very strong uh, mental capacity, you know, and, and you build that, that mental strength. So when you get back uh, and doing things that you love to do and you want to do, it's that much easier, but also you, you're going to see the transfer and the correlation of the things you're doing. And long behold, I'm, I guarantee you, some of those guys are going to be like, Oh man, I'm going to go back and do some of those things that I picked right. up in the off season. Because yeah. now I can see the direct correlation and it's helping my wrestling. Why haven't I done this the whole time? It is yeah. that simple, right? Uh, and it's 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 easier said than done, right? I can totally. go back and fix this and fix that. Every time I come back from a tournament, even say the U.S. Open, you know, 150 to zero, I came back and I'm like, well, I wasn't doing this. I wasn't doing this. It's, it's yeah. very easy to point out the negative and what's going bad or what you can't do. Yep. It's hard to be creative and make do with what you got. Right. Yeah. But once you start doing that, you, I'm telling you, your, 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 your mental strength and just your will to win. Right. When you come back and, and knowing everything that you've done, your confidence is now from here through the roof. Right. And you know yourself that, I didn't take this downtime. Even though we were in quarantine, I was still doing the right things, dieting, running, and anything I can to improve myself. Uh, but in another sense, everybody's in the same position. So, uh, but you, you know, got to look for opportunity right now. And I just made a post about that yesterday with my my marketing company, Bash Solutions. Like, man, if you are looking for opportunity and you're seeking opportunity, it's right. there. And one thing I want to ask you too. You know, I'm a guy who I get pissed and I get discouraged when you move the goalpost. If I think I can do something June 1st and I can't do it till August 1st, I get mad. I don't deal with that well. 
And I'm curious for you, you and I spoke on the podcast right after the Olympic trials were postponed. And I'm curious now following up on that a couple months later, you know, you are a guy, I don't think there's a guy at 65 kilos who has more momentum than you. And I'm curious your perspective on how this delay in the Olympic trials, what is your perspective two months after the postponement of it all? Um, I think it's still the same perspective, right? Uh, it's the same perspective as before it was postponed. It's win the day, win every decision, uh, and everything counts towards the uh, Olympic title, right? And, and the decisions I make today, whether it's working out, whether it's my personal life, whether I'm eating, I think they all have weight towards the Olympic gold. So for me, it, it hasn't, nothing's changed, only the time limit, right? Yeah. But if I tell you, right, if I tell you, you got a book report, read this book, give me a 10 page book report, May 21st, right? And I don't want to compare my wrestling to a book report, but <laughs> 21st, right? Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm going to give you until June 21st to do it. Yeah. Right. Uh, now there's two, there's two things you can take from that. You can take the person that's going to be like, okay, I can put this off all the way until, yeah. you know, June 18th and get it yeah. done. I got a whole extra month to do what I want now. Or you're going to see the other person that's like, okay, well now I have a whole extra month to improve in my cardio, my diet, my strength, my mental abilities, my physical abilities, right? So that only gives me time to not take myself, right? I'm right here right now, right? And this is, this is where I am, right? By the time I come back next year, I'll be at a higher level just because of the knowledge and everything that I've went through this year, it only adds to my plate. It only yeah. helps me. Right. So for me, it's, um, it's the same mindset. It's win every day. It's prepare every day. For, if I'm going to go win the Olympic gold, yes, yeah. wrench has been thrown in our plans, but I'm not going to complain if you give me an extra year to work on a gut wrench and defending gut wrench. And you think even at, even at 30 years old, because that isn't that old, but wrestling is typically a young man sport, right? Everybody always tends to favor the young guy in the sport. So for you, as, as just maybe a fan or somebody who consumes the sport, I look at it and say, all right, J.O. is going to be 30 for the Olympic trials. Now he's going to be 31 for the Olympic trials. And I get what you're saying from a perspective of, and, and I think Burrow said the same thing of like, I have an extra year to sharpen my skills. I have an extra year to improve my cardio. But from an age standpoint, do you think about that at all of a 30 year old J.O. versus a 31 year old? Uh, I do, but as long as I'm taking into consideration my recovery and really going about of taking care of my body the right ways, yep. I believe, like I, I mean, said, Dake thinks he's getting younger, so. <laughs> yeah, and that's Kyle. Kyle is very, uh, Kyle has a system that uh, is very well, and I got to witness it for two years. Uh, and to watch Kyle and the things he, he does, uh, not only makes him strong physically, but what he believes in and he executes his lifestyle, I think that also makes him very dangerous mentally. Yeah. Because once you believe in something that you're doing with a full heart and you believe the team around you, it's very hard to beat that person. Yeah. I don't, I don't care if, you know, God himself came down. Right. And I think that goes for any wrestler. If they're doing, if, they're firing on all cylinders and what they believe they're doing is working for them. And if they do it, they won't be beat. It's hard to beat them. It's, it's just because mentally they believe they've done everything right and they don't deserve to lose. Yeah. Right. So uh, me looking at it, I got to get better uh, and I have time, but I, I, I get better with my recovery and, I get better with these things, whether it's wrestling, uh, nutrition, recovery, you know, um, attacking it every day. There's new stuff I learn every day. But like I said last year, uh, with, you know, one of the things that I got to work with Kyle is understanding recovery and how to 
treat your body and feel good. Uh, and you got that Traeger now to make all that good food. <laughs> love the Traeger. We're, we're actually <laughs> cooking on it right now. What do you got on there right now? We got a ribeye, two fillets, and some. Are broccoli. you reverse searing it? Gary, what? reverse searing it? Not today, he said. Oh, you got it. I got so, to come check you out. Dude, reverse searing it is, is the best. You smoke it to like 115. You take it off. You throw the Traeger up to 500. You put it in a cast iron skillet. You just maybe two two minutes aside. Oh, there's nothing like it. Well, I'll be coming to visit you real soon. For that. <laughs> Anytime, man. So, yeah, last thing here, I guess, before I let you go, you're wrestling all this Sunday. Everybody listening you know, go to J.O.'s profile, click that link when you buy it and help support him and his training for the Olympics. What do you think is the score of this match? What do I think is the score? I think it's going to be, it's for the, I want to say, you know, 15, 14. I want a high scoring match. We're both offensive wrestlers. None of us are going to shut down. You know, uh, if we can, I'd like a 2019 match, but you know, keeping it on a conservative side, we'll say, we'll say 11-10. 11-10. You, I'm assuming. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way I'm picking against me. No way. How <laughs> high is your confidence level? Like, are you like, and you can say what you want, but are you 100% like, I'm winning this match? Yeah. Uh, it, and, and you got to think, like, when I go into matches, right, this is way different because I'm usually cutting. I'm like 10 pounds over. I'm like, man, I got to get this weight off. And, and are my legs going to have the pop? I'm questioning that. But obviously, I, I worked through that this year. But going into this match, it's like I got to do 10 more power cleans and do the cardio and, and build my strength. So um, it's different challenges, right? It's it's not. Do you feel your conditioning level is that much more? Like your match with Bajrang, it seems like at the end you were getting a little fatigue, and I don't know if that was weight cut, but you were getting a little fatigue. Do you feel like that's gone now when you're not cutting down? For sure. I can't wait to see a six minute seventy nine kilo Jo. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's it's a lot of action, right? And it, it allows me to wrestle, uh, not having to cut weight. I can worry about shooting a million times instead of 20 times Yeah, and, and doing so it gives me uh, the freedom and ability uh, to wrestle to my potential and have an excited match with Jason Knopf. Dude, and I, I love that you said freedom because there's so many kids, I think, who still try to cut weight if they think they can get more wins. And a common theme, this is episode like 70 or 71 of this podcast. Everybody keeps saying, the more freedom they have, the more free they are to wrestle, the more fun they have, the better off they are. And right. I think that's like anybody listening. If you're young and you're cutting weight, like stop. Yeah. If like it, it's not worth it, it right. it's you'll you'll wrestle better. And this isn't coming from me. This is coming from Jo and everybody else in the, on this podcast. That is like you're, if you wrestle freer, you're gonna wrestle better. And that's what Nolf told me back when he was at seventy. And he's like. Yeah, I don't want to wrestle 70. I'm going 74. I don't care if Burroughs and Imar and Dake and everybody else are there. Like, right. I was thinking too much about the weight cut, and it's too much of a distraction. It's not worth it. There's so much anxiety and stress that get put on top of it. You're already stressed and have a lot of anxiety from having to compete. And yeah. Wrestlers in general, we're perfectionists. We want to have, we want to wrestle to our ability, but we want to execute the perfection perfect game plan yeah our style perfectly uh and then when you add weight cutting and really tearing the body down if you're not doing it correctly right yep. at a young age even high school kids don't have the knowledge or just it's hard to have the discipline to sit there and execute a great weight cut right yep. and you know um as a kid growing up i never cut weight you know i didn't cut weight until i got to oklahoma state and then i i figured out that there's a right way to cut weight and there's a wrong way. And you can find out real quick with my freshman year and sophomore campaigns. Right. Um, I think that's just knowledgeable, but then you see me go two weight classes up and not give up a takedown. So I believe 
that going up and, and wrestling um, your, your weight class will give you more freedom, but it, it allows it to be fun, but also, you know, you see progression, right? And you go into the room worrying about where I'm going to progress instead of going into the room worrying about, okay, I got to run after this. I got to run later tonight. I'm still 10 over. I got to lose five in this workout. Now the workout becomes poop, honestly, because it's yeah. not about, can I get better at my single leg? It's about, I got to lose these five pounds, right? I don't care how, like if my single leg is great. And it's I'm mentally stressing. Like I've, I've seen the number of guys that tell me whether it's on the podcast or offline that you need as much of your mind dedicated to the sport as possible. And if you're wasting 50% of, of it on weight cuts and putting plastics on and this and that you're taking 50% away from getting better, from having fun, from pursuing your passion. That's right. not a fair trade-off. Not at all. Now you're taking your weight cuts are taken away from your training. Those extra two, three miles you could have put in without plastics, right. To make your legs stronger, to make you have that pop in the third period or to get that last takedown that you need to win the match. It isn't yep. there. Right. Because you, you've put in 50 miles this week running just to get five pounds off. And now you didn't jeopardize the biggest picture of the whole, the whole scenario is competing and being able to compete freely, but also compete at your highest level and give yourself an opportunity to win. Yeah. Right? And the, and the kids too young that are cutting weight, aren't thinking about burnout. I went to a high school that had a lot of really good kids, but they cut so much weight after high school. A lot of them did nothing right. because they were burned out. They cut weight, JV, varsity, middle school. And now what? You did all that for a couple extra tournament wins and championships, and now you're burnt out. You're not even going to go to college. Right. And that, you rob yourself. And that's an opportunity to go to college, right? Wrestling presents an opportunity for you to hire your education, but also take you to these places such as college. But um, once you start thinking about, you know, weight cutting and all of that, uh, I think it's either you do it right, right? And this is with anything. It's either you do it right or you don't do it at all, right? Because, you know, you see so many kids put in so much time and work. And, you know, I've had guys through the years that I've, stand, I've stood next to and competed with and went through five years of college with that I thought could have easily, you know, been world team members, world champs, NCAA champs. Yeah. But they could not perform. Yeah. And in doing so, they're, they're wanting to wrestle at this weight cat class, but they're jeopardizing the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to win a national title, which they could have done at weight classes above. Yeah. But the stigma of it is you got to cut weight to be successful, and that's not true at all. And very few guys come on this podcast. The majority of the guys who come on this podcast are successful. And the, the ones who come on this podcast and say they went up a weight, nobody says they, they regretted it. Nobody comes on here and says, I went up a weight. I would, wish I would have cut down a weight or two. No, that's taking like an extra burger and steak from them. You know, as long right. as you do it right, you feel good. And when you feel good, you go out and you compete good. But, you know, having that freedom to really be yourself throughout the whole process and to enjoy it, I, I think makes it such a, a more ex experienced um, opportunity for wrestlers. But then they, it, it opens their eyes yeah. you know what I mean like even me I have I'm not gonna lie I have I have had the thoughts you know of I could go 74 kilos you know what I mean I'm Burroughs Dick yeah. I'm Arnold if you guys are listening <laughs> yeah yeah put them put them on alert I'm coming nah I wait until they all clear out and then I'll bump up <laughs> maybe 2024 but uh I you know you I still have those thoughts and and you know, I wrestle these guys. I train yeah. with them, right? And it's it's not that big of a difference. And sometimes I sit back and I'm like, well, what if I did train for 74 kilos and lift it and yeah. really filled out 163, you know? Uh, 
we'll never know that until after this cycle. So <laughs> right. entertain it. Uh, but like I said, I think weight cutting, if, if it's done correctly and you have a disciplined wrestler that can do it, sure. But all in all, right now, you should always think about evolving, getting better in your craft and not trying to cut off an extra 10 pounds just to get three more wins or be successful. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not having fun, especially I ask a lot of people this, but it's like the, the common denominator of the answer seems to be if you're not having fun and you're not pursuing your passion at the level you're at right now, there's no way you'd survive. If you're not having fun and you're doing what I'm doing, please, please, after this podcast, reach out to me. <laughs> and tell me who you are because I will praise you for the rest of my life. You will be worship. But to go through what we're going through and to not have fun, um, it would be literally miserable. It would be yeah. miserable. You gotta love what you're doing. And I think that's across the board in anything you do. You gotta yeah, love what you're doing. even if you're not a wrestler, if you're a if you're a business owner, if you're whoever you are listening to this right. podcast, it is so important to love what you do, which is one of the reasons I started this podcast because you know, my marketing company is fun, but some of the clients are a drag. They want to use you. They want to drain you. And I, I, you can love what you do as much as it doesn't matter. If, if clients start draining you and it's not as fun, you're going to lose your passion for it. And you got to do something to pursue your passion and have fun. And that's like this podcast to have right. these conversations. There's nothing like it. You got to pursue your passion. You got to have fun with what you're doing. Hands down. So if you're not having fun, get out i'm yeah. just playing i'm playing don't quit <laughs> We're not playing. don't quit but like listen i've got a lot a lot of clients that drive me nuts i didn't close my company i just said let me also do something that i can have some fun which is this podcast and speaking yeah. of this podcast listen you got some ribeyes cooking some fillets i'm sure they're coming off the grill soon so go enjoy your dinner everybody listening go to jo's profile click the link Buy the fight. Message us after. We want to thank you for supporting the sport, for supporting J.O. J.O., anything else you got for us? No. Uh, like Justin said, go to that link. Click it. Smash it. Tune in to watch me and Jason off put on the show and, and bring wrestling back. Uh, I'd like to thank Bash just for bringing me on to the Bash Mania podcast again. Uh, it's always a pleasure. It won't be the last time, man. <laughs> No, no, I, I look forward to a couple more. And by uh, the way, guys, anybody listening, tweet us your prediction. J.O. thinks 11-10 him. What do you think? Tweet us. Let us know so we can kind of go back and forth with you leading up to Sunday. Hey, hey, don't get too crazy. Some of these predictions are putting, like, pressure on me. Like, I see some people <laughs> saying, like, tech, and I'm like, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I already have pressure now. Like, Tech for you or tech for Nolf? Me. <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 stop that. Stop that. Right. I'd rather you say Nolf's getting a tech, right? Don't give me that that pressure. Dude, fans, wrestling fans are nuts. Even with like this Taylor Downey match, all, there, there's some like rabid Downey fans that are like, Downey's gonna tech Taylor. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Look, That's Downey's been training hard, but Taylor's a world champion. Like, man, wrestling fans are are wild. That's what you gotta love. You you have the people who oh got, you gotta got love it support them and 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 Downey, you got you got a character who's almost like a, a UFC individual where he know, should go UFC. Combat. He's got that personality where dude the, the the guy's never won anything world level and he's got sixty thousand plus followers. I anybody who talks crap about Downey and what he's done, like he has grown an audience, love or hate him, he's made you follow him. Publicity's publicity. Yeah. Right. Good or yeah. bad. All right. Listen, man, go enjoy those steaks. Tell Gary to start reverse searing them. And if not, you're going to come up here and reverse serum. <laughs> and, and we'll chat soon, man. Good luck Sunday. I'll talk to Thank you soon. You. Thank you. Have a good one. Awesome, weekend. man. See ya. And that is it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. If you did enjoy this episode of the podcast, be sure to leave a five-star rating review on Apple Podcasts and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on more episodes. For more wrestling content, be sure to follow Bash Mania on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And follow me. I'm at JBash on Instagram and at Justin J. Bash on Twitter. I'll be back with another episode shortly. See ya. 
the beat goes on. 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 On.